Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome back to another transfer video. It's been a fairly quiet couple of days in all fairness, with the exception of some Fakir rumours and the Moses Simon stuff which we'll touch on later on. But the news tonight is about Jordan Shakiri. Now this is a player we were interested in a few years ago before he joined Stoke back in his Bayern Munich days, I think, around uh, the last World Cup. We were linked with him. Um, and that sort of stuff has surfaced again. Um, Paul Joyce, Melissa Reddy, everyone that you could really you know, consider reliable has been reporting tonight that we are interested in signing the Switzerland international. He's got a release clause of somewhere between 12 to 13 million. Um, his representatives have been offering him out and he wants to stay in the North West. So Liverpool and Everton are actually the clubs linked. I've seen elsewhere that Southampton were keen and might be one or two others as well. But... Liverpool and Everton might be the two that are going to bat it out for him, given the fact they want to stay in the North West. Um, his wages are around 100 grand a week, which is putting off the foreign clubs, and he wants to stay in the Premier League. So, I mean, you know, this obviously wouldn't be instead of a Fakir or a Dembele or a Pulisic or whoever. I think this is just another option, and it's one that I'd be more than happy with, to be honest. I mean, I've not watched a lot of Stoke full matches over the past couple of years because I find them quite boring to watch, but. Whenever you see Shakiri <laughs> on Match of the Day, and I know people don't like Match of the Day players or players that, or listening to people that only have seen players on Match of the Day, but I mean, I have seen Shakiri play four games. He is a, he's a good, productive player. Eight goals and seven assists in the league for Stoke last season. Solid return, especially in a crap team. I thought he was outstanding every time I saw him. Um, before that, you know, four goals and two assists season before that, they only played 21 games. He'll, you know, he had an injury, 15-16, um, three goals and six assists in 27 games. So he's involved in, well, better than one in one goal every three games um, last season anyway, which, which is strong. He's, he's been a Swiss international for a long time. He's played at the highest level with Inter and Bayern Munich. I like the player. He's 26 years old. Um, given the fact that last season was his best in the Premier League, you'd think hopefully he's getting into the, the, the peak years of his career. Um, and it's a low-risk move at 12 to 13 million pounds. Um, I don't think you can expect us to sign all boss players, all absolute world stars. I know we want to strengthen uh, in the front three and have more options, but for me, Shakiri's a better option than Danny Ings. He's a better option than Divock Origi. He's a better option than Daniel Sturridge at the moment. Um, and you could argue he's, you know, he's better than Dominic Slanky. So for me, he comes in and is comfortably a bench player. That's absolutely fine with me. Um, I know it's 100k a week, but these days especially with such a low transfer fee, and you know you're going to get a certain amount of quality with Jordan Jakiri. I've got no qualms of any of that. So if we were to end up signing him, I'd be absolutely fine with it. Everton obviously also linked and maybe they'll offer him a bigger role in the squad with Marco Silva, the new manager. Um, he might see you know, a situation where he's able to build his attack around Jakiri or at least fit him into that starting eleven regularly. Uh, Wayne Rooney looks like he's going to depart. Uh, I'm not sure what his plans are with the likes of Nias. Uh, they've got Theo Walcott in there, obviously, who I managed, I imagine they'll plan to use a lot. They got Sigurds in there too, so um, you could probably see a way in which Shakiri fits into their, their their plans. Maybe more so than ours, but would he be a guaranteed starter at Everton? Maybe he would, and you know, maybe you'd argue that if he's not a guaranteed starter at Everton, why are we even looking at him? I think he would start for them. He wouldn't start for us, obviously, but uh, we need a bigger squad. It's as simple as that, and he he. Uh, he he he's got goals in him. He's good at set pieces. He's strong. He's you know the only thing I've seen um, sort of argued against him is that he doesn't press as as much as you'd like from a Liverpool attacker. Um, I've seen that brand around in places. I'm honestly not sure. I've I've not looked at his running stats. Uh, maybe I should have. But uh, all I do know is that it's low risk. He's cheap, and he's a player that whenever I've kind of seen in the Premier League, he's looked pretty good. So let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Everyone is saying that are interested. Uh, Paul Joyce in the Times, um, he's definitely gonna leave Stoke since they've been relegated. He's got that relegation release clause. Um, and yeah, he, he wants to, uh, he wants to, he's been vocal about the fact that he wants to stay in the Premier League. Um, so that looks absolutely fine to me. Moving on, also in Paul Joyce's piece regarding Shakiri, he does touch on the latest on Allison, uh, Roma are proving difficult over him, uh, says Joyce. So whether that means we're trying to get a better price than the than the reported 79 million, um, I don't know. Or whether even that's not enough. I mean, who knows what's going on there? That's going to take a long time. A deal of that size would not get done overnight. I think we're going to be waiting until way after the World Cup before that gets done. 
Um, Jan Oblak has also mentioned there his £88 million release clause. Will Liverpool be tempted into that? Will Oblak even want to join? The goalkeeper thing is still very much in the air. I don't think that's going to be resolved anytime soon. Um, and yeah, that's that's it uh, for Joyce. Oh, he does mention Fakir as well. Um, you know, Shakiri surely wouldn't be instead of Fakir. He does mention that Fakir, um, Leon are refusing to name their price for him. So that isn't going to happen as quickly as we first thought. I mean, David Maddox said just after we signed Fabinho that he thought things might accelerate, things might move quickly. It was a matter of when, not if, for Nabil Fakir. But what's coming out tonight and over the last few days, um, it's not going to be that easy. Obviously, the World Cup plays a big factor in that, possibly. Um, obviously, will that serious price up? We don't know. So, Shakiri looks like, well, the bookies have got us a 5-4 to, to sign him. That one looks like it could be easy to do if we want to do it. Jurgen Klopp is genuinely interested in signing the Swiss international. Alisson, Oblak, Fakir, still very much in the air. They could be the sagas. I think Fakir it might be the easiest one to do because there's at least an acceptance there that he will probably leave, whereas the others you know, might be a no-no. Uh, and I will touch on Moses Simon, even though I've never heard of him. But it is a piece of news that came out the other day from Ian Doyle in the Echo. Uh, yesterday, in fact, uh, Liverpool eyeing move for 10 million rated Nigeria international Moses Simon. Um, all I've seen are the little clips everyone's putting around on Twitter. I've got his stats in front of me here. Six goals last season, five the year before. He's 22 years old. He's got 20 caps for Nigeria. Again, it's a low-risk one. You can't expect us to buy all boss players. We need options. We need guys that are going to be happy to sit on the bench or even some weeks, not even in the squad. So, yeah. Uh, would we sign him and Shakiri? Maybe not. Um, if, if Everton managed to price Shakiri away from Stoke and we ended up with Simon, it is what it is. I'm not going to be too fussed. These squad players, we need them. Um, I'm not going to lose any sleep over which one it is. Probably prefer Shakiri perhaps because I think it's a bit safer. Um, even though this at 10 million is very low risk, Moses Simon. Uh, but you know, are we really realistically going to get Fakir, Pulisic, for example, and another? quality player like um, you know Dembele on loan or, or anything like that I think realistically we're going to get Fakir one of the top quality forward um, so that there's five you know real class players to, to battle for his front three and then one or two more you know with, with Fakir being able to play in midfield so you could arguably say six from three with four of them being absolute class I think we need to really upgrade on Danny Ings as much as I, I like the guy and I think I want him to do well um, and I don't really want to be seeing Dom Slanky coming on with 15 minutes to go and we need to get an equaliser against Man United. You know, so that sort of thing I think we need to improve on. I think Klopp realises that now. Um, same with the goalkeeper, we need to be splashing out on a big one. It, it's been good fun being the plucky underdogs like Jürgen Klopp's been portraying us to be. But if we're serious about winning leagues, um, I think this is a summer where we're going to have to spend big, especially if Coutinho leaving. Um, we could make some money back on Sturridge and Origi, although not a, not a huge deal. Um, don't know whether we're going to sign a centre-back. We've not seen any links in a while um, since the Lascelles and Tarkovsky stuff came out um, a couple of months ago. We'll see. There's lots more still to be done in this window. But yeah, Jordan Shakiri is the news tonight. Let's see how that progresses. It could be a deal that gets done quite quickly, given the fact that the club know he's going to leave and he wants to go. And um, We're you know a bigger club than Stoke, so... I think he would jump at the chance to move. Let's see what happens. Uh, leave a comment with your thoughts on all of the above um, and subscribe to the channel for more transfer news and for World Cup stuff, everything that's going to be exciting this summer. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. It's Ben Say on all of those platforms and I'll see you next time.